All right, guys, so again, this is Thursday's lesson that you're watching right now, so you're checking Wednesday's homework. So if you have clicked the wrong module, just go back, do the day before, because um, <clears throat> again, this is Thursday's work. But right now, we're going to check our homework from last night, which was on the Pythagorean theorem, and then we're going to learn about some special right triangles. So first thing we have here is it says that you are going to buy television and you're looking to buy a 55 inch regular rectangular television and the salesperson tells you um, that the screen has a four to five uh, four to three ratio from the base to the height so a 55 inch rectangular television means that and it tells you that the size of the television is represented by the length of the diagonal so what that means here is that you've got a television that has a 55 inch diagonal in it. So then the salesperson is telling you that there's a four to three ratio of the base to the height. So a four to three ratio could make this four X and this three X. And I did reference those side lengths in the video um, yesterday. So it says the salesperson at the store, okay, we got that part. Uh, it says there's also a one inch plastic frame around the screen. So basically you're gonna have a situation where you've got your 55 here, whatever these are, but then there's gonna be an additional inch. So you're gonna have an inch basically in each direction. So really it's two inches being added on um, height-wise and length-wise. All right, so it says at your house you have a shelf in your living room that can fit a television that measures three and a half feet across. So let's just take that three and a half feet and we're going to turn that into inches. So we've got three and a half feet uh, times 12, so that's going to give you 42 inches. So basically you're trying to figure out if this television that has the 55 diagonal with side lengths of 3x and 4x and the additional one inch plastic here, we're trying to figure out if that can go in our 42 inch shelving area. All right, so here we go. So in order to solve this question, we're going to have to know what x is so that we can figure out what our actual um, length and width of our television are. So televisions are rectangular, making your diagonal your hypotenuse. So you're going to have a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So that's going to be 3x squared plus 4x squared is equal to 55 squared. Well, when we square these quantities, we square the coefficient and the variable. So this is 9x squared. I'm going to be adding that to 16x squared. And 55 squared is 3,025. So I'm going to combine like terms. So I'm going to end up with 25x squared is equal to 3,025. I'm going to divide by 25 here. And again, this looks a lot like the last example question, example 5. So we get that x squared is equal to 121. So again, we don't want x squared. We just want x. So I'm going to take the square root, and I get that x is equal to 11. So when I go to then think about my side lengths, um, this 3x has been a 33 inch, my 4x is a 44 inch. So basically I've got a television that's going to be 33 inches here, 44 inches here. Then in order to actually fit it in, you'd have the inch of plastic. So it'd actually be 44 plus 1 plus 1, so it'd be 46 inches across. So you were trying to figure out if it would fit that three and a half feet across. Well three and a half feet across is only 42 inches and this TV would be 46 inches so it would not fit in the space that was designated for it. 
So that's a, um, if you were able to get that question, you truly understand all the different elements of the Pythagorean theorem um, and your exponent rules. So good work with that one. Um, and if not, I hope you watched that. And now we're going to move on to the homework assignment or the other part of the homework. All right. So for number one here, you were looking for a hypotenuse <clears throat> and you got that x equals 10. I am not going to solve all these out, but if you need one of them, um, again, I'm telling you what you're looking for. So in this one, you're looking for a hypotenuse. Um, so go back, try again, and if you can't get it, email me, and I will record a video, go over it for you. Um, for number two, we are also looking for a hypotenuse, and we get that x is equal to 39. For number three, we are looking for a leg, and we get that x is equal to 90. For number four, we are looking for a hypotenuse, and we get that x is equal to 5. For number five, <clears throat> we're looking for a leg, and we get that x is equal to 36. For number six, we're looking for a leg, and we get that x is equal to 100. For number seven, we are looking for a leg, and we get that x is equal to 30. For number eight, we get that x ends up being equal to 91.4, so the table is longer than the diagonal of the door, so that won't work. Um, because the table has a diameter of 92. That's the diagonal of the door, so it's not going to fit in there. Um, the next thing for number 9 is we get yes. Um, it just needs to reach 15.8 feet, and your ladder is 16 feet long, so you'll be good there. Um, then in our number 10, we get that C is equal to 14.14. Uh, so for this one, um, you have a right triangle down here. So you basically start with the Pythagorean theorem down here to find this length, which ends up being 10. Then you already know that this is 10. So then you end up finding the hypotenuse there again. So hopefully that is helpful. Um, again, so if you need to have me go over any of those, you just email me and let me know. But again, do try it yourself again first. All right. So we're going to move into talking about special right triangles. So there are two types of special right triangles. And special right triangles are things that appear um, pretty frequently on the SAT, random places like that. Uh, and the reason for that is because special right triangles have um, specific ratios between the side lengths that are easy to use. Um, and we use them anytime one of these figures is presented to us. And they're also um, figures that appear sort of frequently. So we, this one, the first one that we're going to talk about is called a 30, 60, 90. So basically, um, that's just what it's referred to. The special rate triangle is called a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, and basically how that works is the side length that is opposite the shortest, the smallest angle. So the shortest side is always going to be above across from the smallest angle is always X. So if this were five, it would be five. Then the one across from the 60 degree angle is always x root 3. So if this were 5, this would be 5 root 3. And then the hypotenuse is always 2 times the x value. So this and then if x were 5 in this one, then that would be 10. So again, you don't really have to know how to use this yet. That's what we're going to talk about right now. Um, but basically, that is that relationship that always exists. So across from the 30, you have x. Across from the 60, you have x root 3. And across from the uh, right angle, you have 2x. And basically, if you have one of these, because of these rules, you can then figure out all of them. So um, we're going to look at these here. And if you just have a piece of paper, you can just uh, draw these out real quick. All right. 
And I highly recommend that anytime you're doing one of these, you put the actual base relationship somewhere where you can see it. So if we've got a 30, wow, that's awful. So if we've got a 30, 60, 90, across from the 30 is x, across from the 90 is 2x, across from the 60 is x root 3. So here we're looking, uh, and they give us the value of what is across from the 30 degree angle. So across from the 30 degree angle is x, so in this one we know that x is equal to 4. So now we just have to find our other side lengths. So we know the hypotenuse is just 2x, so the hypotenuse is going to be 8. And then we know that the longer side, um, the longer leg is across from the 60, so that would be um, x root 3, so that would be 4 root 3. All right, so in the next one, they give us the piece across from the right angle, so they give us the 10. So the 10 is 2x, so we know that 2x is equal to 10. Well, that allows us to state that x is equal to 5. So we know that our x, um, the base piece of this is x, so we know that that's across from the 30, so that's going to give us a 5 here. Then we know that across from the 60 is going to be x root 3, so this means that right here we are going to have 5 root 3. All right, so for number so this one here, we get that x root 3 because that's the piece they give us, is the x root 3 piece is equal to 7 root 3. Well, I don't want x root 3, I just want to know what x is, so I can divide by root 3, and I can divide by root 3, and I get here that x is equal to 7. So I know that x here is equal to 7, so now I know that across from the right angle is going to be 2x, so that is going to be 14. So that's one way that you can use these relationships here, uh, and we're going to look at some others. All right, so it tells you you've got a television that's measured by its diagonal. It tells you that this is 30, so that means that this is a 90 degree angle because it's the, uh, a rectangular television. And then here, um, if this is 90 and this is 30, that means that this is 60, so we know we're looking at a 30, 60, 90. So again, uh, we haven't been doing this for a long time, so we know across from the 30 is x, the hypotenuse is 2x, and across from the 60 is x root 3. So they give us across from the 30 here, so they actually give us x. So we know that x here is equal to 30. No, we don't, because it's not. The angle's 30, x is equal to 24. So we know that we've got a um, relationship here where we've got 24. So now it wants to know what's the size of the television. Well, remember, televisions are measured by their diagonal. So this one is just asking us for the measure of the diagonal. Well, that's across from the 90. So it's just asking us for 2x here. And 2x, if x is 24, is going to be 48. So this would be a 48-inch television. All right, here they give us a 30 degree. They give us the um, right angle, making this the 60, and it wants to know how far from the base of the building is the car. So they give us across from the 30. So across from the 30 is always the x. So they gave us x equals 18. Well, we want to know from the right angle to the 30. Well, from the right angle to the 30 is always x root 3. We already know x, so it's going to be 18 root 3 units <coughs> or meters. All right, so I hope that makes sense because we are now going to look at another triangle. So 30, 60, 90 is one of the ones that is important to us. And then the second one that is important to us is a 45, 45, 90. So this is always an isosceles um, because if it has two equal angles, that means it has two equal legs. So here we're looking at a 45, 45, 90. So um, when I have 
this relationship here, um, obviously the side lengths across from equal angles are also going to be equal. So those will each be x. And then the hypotenuse is going to be x root 2. So that is the relationship when you have a 45, 45, 90. So here we're going to start looking at these. So again, I'm just going to set this up. These are 45, which makes these each x and this is x root 2. So when I go to look here, they've given us something across from a 45, so they've given us an x value of 5. So if I look at my relationship here, my legs are x, and the other leg is also x, which makes that 5 as well. And then the hypotenuse is x root 2, so if x is 5, that just makes that 5 root 2. Here we move down um, where we have 8 root 2. Well, 8 root 2 here is across from our, our right angle, so it is our x root 2 relationship. So I need to know what x is, so I divide by root 2, I divide by root 2, and I get that x is equal to 8. So if x is equal to 8, then that then becomes both of our side lengths there. <clears throat> All right, so on the next one here, across from the right angle, they give us 12. So we know that the x root 2 piece is actually equal to 12. So now we need to figure out what x is, so we need to divide by root 2. Well, we should remember from our study of radicals that we can't have a square root in the denominator. So, or a radical in the denominator. So I've got 12 over root 2. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by root 2. So this is going to be 12 root 2 here. And then root 2 times root 2 is going to be the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is just 2. So I end up with 12 to the square root of 2 divided by 2, which is 6 root 2. So that means here that we know that x is equal to 6 root 2. So that means our side lengths are each 6 root 2. If you don't believe your answer, check it. You know that this is x. And so if this is x root 2, then you would have to do 6 root 2 times root 2. Well, root 2 times root 2 is 2, and 6 times 2 is 12. So you can check your work there. All right, so it wants to know what is the distance between first base and third base. So we got first base and third base. So right here, um, we're looking at a 45, 45, 90 because we know that this is an isosceles triangle where we have a right angle here. So we know here that our x value is equal to 90. And we know that in a 45, 45, 90, we get x, x, and x root 2. So that means the distance here, the hypotenuse, is just going to be x root 2. So it's going to be 90 root 2. Then the last one here tells us the perimeter of a square is 28 centimeters, and it wants to know the length of the diagonal. Well, if the perimeter is 28, then we have to divide that into its four sides. So 12, um, 28 divided by 4 is 7. So we know here we've got a square with side lengths of 7. It wants to know the length of the diagonal. Well, since these are the same and this is 90, these angles have to be the same. Um, so this has got to be a 45, 45, 90. So we've got x, x, x root 2. So I know that 7 here is going to be my value of x. So the diagonal is going to be x root 2. So it's going to be 7 root 2 centimeters. All right, so in this question, it's similar to the one that we just did, uh, but sort of the inverse of it because it is telling us the length of the diagonal of a square. So the diagonal of the square here has a length of 20. Now we know that a square 
has equal side lengths. So you know here that you have a square, so this is a 90 degree angle. And then the side lengths are going to be x, x all around because it is a square, so they all have to be the same. So at this point, we should recognize that since these have to be the same, and this is a 90 degree angle, that these two angles have to be the same. So we are looking at a 45, 45, 90. So anytime you've got a square with a diagonal, you're looking at a 45, 45, 90. So in our 45, 45, 90, we've got our right angle here that makes this no, it doesn't. This makes this x root 2. It makes both of these x. So we were given our diagonal there. So we know in our problem that x root 2 is equal to 20. So again, um, we need to find x because our side lengths here just have a value of x. So we're going to divide by the square root of 2. And that's going to tell us that x is equal to 20 divided by the square root of 2. Well, we know we cannot leave that in that form because we've got a radical in the denominator there. So I'm going to multiply by the square root of 2. So this is going to get me 20 times the square root of 2. Well, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is 2. So this is 20 root 2 over 2, so that means that x is going to equal 10 root 2. So here we've got a value where each of our side lengths is going to be 10 root 2. And again, if you don't believe yourself, you know that the um, hypotenuse has to be um, x times the square root of 2. So we have 10 times the square root of 2 is x times the square root of 2. Well, that gives you 10 times the square root of 4. So that's just 10 times 2, which is 20. And sure enough, there's your hypotenuse of 20. All right. So in example two, we just have to set it up. So it says in a triangle, the measures of the angles are 30, 60, and 90. So we're looking at a 30, 60, 90. So we're going to make this 90. This looks shorter, so we'll make this 30. We'll make this 60. So it tells us that the length of the side opposite the 30 degree angle is 5. And it wants to know what are the other two sides. So in our 30, 60, 90, across from the 30 is x, across from the 90 is 2x, and across from the 60 is x root 3. So they have given us the value of the angle that is across from the 30. So across from the 30, we find x. So we know that x is equal to 5. That's lovely because we know our hypotenuse is just 2x, so that's going to make that 10. And then we know that across from the 60 is just x root 3, so that's going to make that 5 root 3. And we will now have all the sides of our triangle there. All right. So example three, it asks us to determine the perimeter of an equilateral triangle with a height of four root three centimeters. All right, so we've got an equilateral triangle here. So that means this is 60, this is 60, and this is 60, because it's an equilateral triangle. And then it tells us that the height of the triangle is, well, now I have a right angle, tells us that the height of the triangle is 4 root 3. So now I know the height, and now I've got a 60 degree angle here, a 90 degree angle here, which means that this piece has become 30. So I'm looking at a situation where I have a 30, 60, 90. So when I'm looking at a 30, 60, 90, again, you want to visualize it. Across from the 30 is x, across from the 90 is 2x, across from the 60 is x root 3. So when we're looking at this, they are giving us the value across from the 60. 
So we know that x root 3 is equal to 4 root 3. Easy, because now we just divide the root 3 off and we get that x is equal to 4. So the x is found across from the 30, so that's going to make that 4. Then we know that the hypotenuse is 2x, so the hypotenuse is going to be 8. Well, now it wants the perimeter. Well, basically, I know one of the side lengths of the full equilateral triangle. And since it's an equilateral triangle, if that one's 8, this one's 8, and this is also 8, this 4 would be 4 and 4. That's where we get 8. So that means that the perimeter here would just be 8 times 3. So it would be 24 centimeters. All right, we're getting close to the end. We're going to be done in under 30 minutes, and that's going to be a whole lesson and checking some homework. All right, so it says a ladder is leaning against the wall of a building and creates a 60-degree angle with the ground. So there's a wall of a building, there's a ladder that's leaning, and it creates a 60-degree angle with the ground. Um, so here's the ground. So that would make this a 60-degree angle with the ground. So here's our ladder. It says it reaches, oh, and that's a 60 degree angle to the ground. Well, the ground to the building, hopefully your building is not leaning, this should be a 90 degree angle. And therefore, this is going to be a 30 degree angle. So this is gonna be a problem about a 30, 60, 90. So it says it reaches a point on the building that is 15 feet directly above the ground. So that means that this piece here across from the 60 is going to be 15 feet. It says determine the length of the ladder and how far the ladder is from the base of the building. So the length of the ladder will be the hypotenuse and how far the ladder is from the base of the building will be this leg here. So um, it's going to ask us to round our answer to the nearest tenth. So we're going to find our like true answers and then we'll find decimal equivalents. So in a 30, 60, 90, Here's our 60, here's our 30, here's our 90. I don't know why I made that so small. Across from the 90 is 2x, across from the 30 is x, and across from the 60 is x root 3. So again, I just set this one up how this one is. So across from the 60, they give us 15. So we know that x root 3 is equal to 15. So now we need to solve for x here, so we divide by root 3, and then we get that x is equal to 15 over root 3, so we need to multiply by root 3. So this is going to give us 15 root 3 over, well, root 3 times root 3 is root 9, the square root of 9 is 3, so we get 15 root 3 over 3. Well, 15 divided by 3 is 5, so this is just 5 root 3. So the value of x is what is across from the 30-degree uh, angle. So this is going to be 5 root 3. Now, then the only other thing I need to find is across from the 90. Well, that's 2x. So 5 root 3 times 2 is just 10 root 3. So those should be all of my side lengths there. It does ask for some rounded to the nearest tenths. So 10 root 3 rounded to the nearest tenth is going to be 17 and 3 tenths. And 5 root 3 rounded to the nearest tenth is going to be 8 and 7 tenths. All right, so I hope that makes sense there. We got one more, and then I'll show you what your delta math is. So again, the delta math is your Thursday night homework. I don't expect it to be done until Friday morning. Um, and again, even then, um, if you need a little bit more time, you can take through the weekend, but then Friday has another Delta Math assignment. So you're gonna have a Delta Math Thursday and Friday. So just don't get yourself buried. A couple of you are already missing some. So it says Kyle's laying stones in his backyard to create a square-shaped patio. So we've got a square here. It says he wants to create a diagonal flower bed running through the patio, diagonal flower bed. He doesn't know how long the flower bed will be given its design. He wants each side of the patio to be 16 feet. How long will the flower bed be? So that means we've got 16 here, 16 here. Well, we've got a square. 
So if we've got a square and these are the same, that means the angles are the same. So it means we've got a 45, 45, 90. So we're in a 45, 45, 90, we get x, x, and x root 2. So here they've given us the value of x, and all we need is the value of the diagonal. So that's going to be x root 2. So that's just 16 root 2. Uh, we can go ahead and round it just uh, to give an actual amount. So 16 root 2 would give us um, about 22.6 feet um, across the diagonal of that square. So I hope that makes sense there. And now we're going to look at the delta math. All right. So your delta math is going to say um, Walsh 5.2. Um, because this was Walsh Lesson 5.2 on special right triangles, and then inside of it it'll say ratios of special triangles. So here you can see a 45, 45, 90. It gives you the side length, and it's asking for x. So again, here it's not saying that this is the ratio. It's like, because obviously x isn't the ratio. It's just saying this is the side length that it wants. So in a 45, 45, 90, we would have, um, if we know that the side length is 6, then the other would just be 6 root 2. So I would submit my answer there, and we would be good to go. And we would go to the next question. Here we're looking at a 30, 60, 90. So they've given me, oh, this is an interesting one. So they've given me... Um, a situation where across from the 60, uh, so across from the 60, I see x root 3. So it's telling me that x root 3 is equal to the square root of 7. Hold on, let me copy this one so we can work this one out. All right, so in this one, they have given you a 30, 60, 90, and they've given you across from the 60 degree angle. So, and across from the 60 degree angle in a 30, 60, 90 is x root 3. So in this one, we know that x root 3 is equal to root 7. So we want to find across from the 30, which it happens to be x, and so we're solving for x here. So we're going to divide by root 3 here. So x is going to be root 7 over root 3. So we need to multiply by the square root of 3. So the square root of 7 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 21 over, well, 3, that would be the square root of 9. Well, the square root of 9 is just 3. So this should be the square root of 21 over 3. Here, um, 21 is just 7 and 3, so we shouldn't be able to pull out any perfect squares. So we got square root of 21 over 3. So let's go through this in delta math. The square root of 21... But no, over 3. So we'd submit our answer, and we'd be good to go. So again, you're just working through um, some questions asking you to apply these ratios. So that'll be it uh, for the homework for um, Walsh 5.2. You don't need to do anything in the Walsh book for that. Um, and then we will learn um, about, on Friday, we will learn about the ratios of the trig ratios, basically. So um, we are going to have a an optional um, Zoom class on Friday where we can deal with the trig ratios. But I um, so I'll get that I'll get out. I will email you about that later. But for right now, um, just focus on Walsh 5.1 and 5.2. All right, bye y'all.